episode 49. Good morning, gentlemen. Hey, good guys. Good morning, everyone. Where do you want to Where do you want to start today? I I just want to start out a little shout out to little general aviation because that is a big thing for me. Um, I don't know if you saw the article with Daryl Mann, Virginia uh-huh. Airport up for tender. Yep. Development. Yep. And he's fighting. I I, I met Daryl mm, a good couple of years ago with your dad, Brian, and uh, I tell you he's so passionate about Virginia. It's unbelievable. And here he is. Fighting, they put it out for tender, expression of interest to develop the airport. And I, you know, I was sitting thinking about it, uh, there's no ways these guys are going to be able to fight a developer coming in. It's just not going to happen. It's such a pity. It's a, it's a real, it's a story that's been going on for a hell of a long time. And uh, I love Virginia. I did my first flight there with my dad. I don't know when that was, must have been 2001 or somewhere around then. And, uh, it's such a it, it it's got such a lovely vibe that airport the whole the, the setup and the people there have been there for years so what mm-hmm. they want to use it for development and uh putting houses and that up i suppose but uh until there is a suitable replacement for general aviation to move to those people are going nowhere those companies are going nowhere and let's hope it stays that way cuz yeah. well they, well is that the case? I mean, they they can just sh- sell it and shut it down, and then I mean, the guys are forced to move, but they they, they do they have nowhere to go. We understand that There's they can't no go to the old Durban International because they won't let that sitting empty as well, which is a little bit crazy. That's so sad, man. It reminds me. I mean, I, I grew up uh, at Lanseria Airport. It was the same thing for me. Um, Lanseria before they went and built the uh, the new terminal building. It had such an awesome vibe. It was such a nostalgic, magic aviation feel. You know, you could smell the avgas and the, the burning jet fumes and then the coffee brewing from... It's an uh, old school. Yes, I vibe. loved that feeling. And then when they went and knocked that terminal building down and built this new, it just became so commercialized and it kind of lost that feel for me. But um, still, going through there, whenever I'm in Durban, I head to Mishlanga and I hit Virginia Airport. Yeah, it's Durban just, Wings it's Club. Just, that's it. <laughs> Got to go there, go and have a beer. I've never landed there. I've always wanted to land there. Yeah. Well, fly myself there, yeah. Yeah, my old man's name is on the board there in uh, the Durban Wings Club. Oh, I think yeah. he was uh, chairman one of the years. can't remember the exact year, but we went there the other day for uh, a couple of beers. And uh, yeah, Brett, I don't know. The way I read it, the way I see it, until there's a suitable, until they can be moved to a suitable airport as a replacement, for me, it looks like they're staying at Virginia. And so, I, yeah, I read the article different um, that they are fighting to stay, but but if the, it, if it goes out to tender and someone buys that land, it's gone. The guys have to move, relocate, shut down, whatever it takes. Yeah. So who owns that there land will right be now? some bureaucracy behind that. Uh, it's obviously, well, is it a political agenda behind that? Oh, well look, there's always a political agenda, but <laughs> the, they've always threatened to take away Virginia. They've always threatened mm. to develop it and get rid of it. So for so. me, um, the best thing the guys can do, everyone get together and launch a lawsuit against them tied up for the next 20 years in court. You spoke about uh, the old Durban airport, Louis Boitzer. I went down there as well on our last trip. My dad and I went down to uh, have our medicals done with Rob Rathgeber there near Virginia Airport. Mm. And we took a drive to the old Louis Boita. Man, you cannot believe the state of that airport. But it's a dump. The Executive Aerospace is old hangar. Still got all the signs up. Mm. Um, it, it's just uh, an airport left to deteriorate. The terminal building is still there. There's, uh, it, it, it was very, very sad. Uh, you, we talk about this now. I don't know if you saw in the, the Fly Africa uh, Facebook page as well, the, um, the state of Freyheit airfield as well. Oh, it's just really? completely dilapidated. And, and, that and, was a gliding and, airport, eh? Yeah, yeah. But still, also one of those magic uh, little airfields where... You, know, oh you would man. go and you'd get that, that awesome aviation feel and it's just been left to rot. Quite sad. Very sad. Let's talk about something more positive. Um, SA Express. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yes, why, do, why don't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's beat that on again. Fly Modern Arc 
Martinez Kraus has offered one rand to offer to, well, an offer to buy the name of SA Express. That much? Yep. Wow. I think he's overpaying. Yep. <laughs> Probably. 24 million or so has been sold already. So that was the, the assets that uh, SA Express had. Um, this Fly Modern Art crowd, they offered 100 million originally. So a typical DPE business deal here. 100 million was offered originally. That got turned down for a pr preferred bidder of uh, Fly Sacks. And uh, I know everyone tired of hearing about that, but the whole yeah. Fly Sacks debacle was set up for failure. There's no question about it. No disrespect to the people that were running it from the, the Sacks employee side, but with no business experience and no business acumen, particularly in, in running an airline, it, it, that, that was a non-starter. That was obviously fronted by this crowdfunding group. Uh, what, uh, what was it? Uprise Africa. Yeah. And, uh, but let's, we'll get to them a bit later. Staying with Tinas Kraus, so he was interviewed on, I think it was MoneyWeb the other day. That interview I'll leave in the show notes. And it was, you listen to this and you think, is this guy bullshitting or is he? <laughs> really? Because <laughs> that clear. They want to buy the name. Why would anyone want to start an airline with the SA Express name. When SA Express was running, that name had already been dragged through the mud. Mm. Remember years ago, Ryan, we actually we, we were forced to go sit in a, I don't know, I can't remember where it was, one of these uh, business parks and listen to a talk about how they're going to change the branding, you know. And uh, because the branding had been affected so <laughs> badly, the branding was so poor, no one knew what it was. Uh. Was it a, was it a, subsidiary of South African Air Force? Was it a, you know, a SAA's sort of pick up the rest of the flights they don't want? Is it a charter company? We're flying at some stage for, we're, we're, we're flying the, the president around. Yeah. And then we were doing charters to, where did we go? We did, I did a charter to Luanda. Yeah. That aircraft was supposed to be used to carry passengers. Mm. I'll never forget, there were passengers that were supposed to fly to Bloemfontein we kicked the passengers off the flight so that we could use that airplane to fly a government charter to Luanda. <laughs> uh, and, and, I, and, and this is why it's such a, it's such a sore story, I think, for, for a lot of people because th they were forced, SA Express was forced into doing things that they ordinarily wouldn't have done. Mm. They didn't want to have to operate to Luanda on that day. They didn't, they didn't want to have to go fetch the, the president from uh, Vardaklov because that means taking an aircraft out the system. Mm. And, uh, but all these things happened, and, and it was my understanding was from a, from a job security point of view, I thought, well, that's great because at least jobs are secure because you're doing things for the government and, and whatnot. But obviously, that, that wasn't the case. No. But anyway, going back to uh, this, this offer. Um, obviously, one rand put down, and they want it clean and clear. And uh, basically, they, they're just going to use the name. And then on the other hand, they say, but they will start up, and it will be on an ACMR basis, so no pilots or anything like that. Fine, I totally understand that. But then why not just go start a new airline? Mm. <laughs> yeah, what, what is so special about Fly Sacks, the name? What, I mean... Well, Fly Sachs's name is not really special. Um, I suppose SA Express is special in terms of the, the, the legacy that it carried, if you can call it that. Because but it as was you're saying, it's not a good legacy. That, that is the issue. Well, it, it's, not, it's not that it's a, a bad legacy. It was a, it was a good airline in its day. It was a fantastic airline in its day. Mm. And it deteriorated rapidly over the, the past few years. But... Um, Someone, these guys want to buy it, use the name, and then it, it sounds like carry on as per normal. Keep flying to Bloemfontein and, uh, <laughs> and Kimberley and whatnot. And it, 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 does, it doesn't make sense to me. Are so I'm, I'm battling to articulate it now and tell you what they're trying to do. Because on one hand, they don't want, they don't want 
you know, ex-pilots, ex-employees, but they want to keep the the sex legacy and carry on flying. This was the same guy, Ryan. Do you remember years ago? I think it was 2016. There was a uh, 3.3 billion or so was put forward to pump into SA Express, and that was going to be used for 10 Chinese aircraft. I remember that. Remember that story? story. Yeah, I remember this that. Is, this is the same guy. <laughs> I don't know him. I haven't yeah. really heard of him. Um, but sounds like a load of bollocks. I wonder if they're thinking that if they if they acquire this SA Express brand at uh, the AOC and the air service license and all that comes with it, maybe it's their way of trying to you know, sort of navigate the shortcut in terms of trying to obtain that because it's, let's face it, if you're going to go and start up a, a, a new company now, you've got to start from, from scratch and you're going to apply for your air service license, your operating certificate. That's a long process and it's an expensive process. So they're probably trying to do that. But it's my understanding that the CAA have basically scrapped all of the, those um, AOCs and, and the air service license. None of that exists. So they really are buying nothing well that's how i understand right. it but <coughs> hasn't gideon novick and the guys from lyft blown that whole thing out the water that this to start an airline it takes uh, a few years they well, and, and i know how they're doing it mm. but the reality is anyone else can do that now when someone mm. comes along and says no no they're going to do this on an acmr basis yeah I'm sure they're looking at the whole lift uh, situation and they're saying, well, maybe we can do that and maybe we can do it with another airline. <laughs> what other airline operates similar aircraft to SA Express? Uh, I've got an idea where they'd be looking to see who could operate for them. Mm. Um, but uh, No, yeah. but I mean, you know, look, Lyft is a completely different story. I mean, you've got guys who have run successful airlines before uh, and there's a lot of intelligent... Um, people behind that whole scenario. Um, in this instance, you know, good luck to them. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be interesting <laughs> to see what uh, what comes of it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably yeah. a whole lot of nothing. It's going to be, mm. I think it's going to go on for a while. Anyway, you can't you can't run an idea down until you really know what it's about. Mm. But in that, uh, that interview on MoneyWeb, it was a bit difficult to figure out what is the plan, what do they want to do, and why do you want to buy that... Uh, that name why, why not just go start up a new company yeah. Let, let's go let's talk a little bit about the crowdfunding we, we on SA Express now let's bury this hatchet here uh, Brett maybe you can jump in a crowdfunding concept you raise money from investors so if you look at the crowdfunding as a central source money comes in from various investors and then the crowdfunding platform invests that money into a, a lucrative project, hopefully. Obviously, in this case, people knew what the, the money was, was going to be for. It was uh, SA Express. Why, in this day and age, during this pandemic, would someone put money into a crowdfunding platform that you're not even holding to invest in an airline? It's it's an interesting thing because any type of crowdfunding, first of all, it's push push it's pushed out to the public, so the public sits there and says, "Ah oh man, what an idea! I can have a stake in a new airline or a new ring or a new contraption, whatever has been d decided," and you give a commitment to it. Um, you can allocate funds, but those funds are not taken from you until. Um, that project actually begins and starts and starts running. And that is the biggest challenge here. So they could have had a billion rand um, committed, but when the airline doesn't actually start operating, there is no money, nothing happens. Um, so effectively, it's a, it's a promise, but with very little commitment at the end of it. So probably what happened with this, with, with this, this funding here is that the guys would eventually realize that, well, f maybe there's no management, uh, maybe it's you can't get the licenses they want. So eventually the, all, the, all those funds are pulled away and uh, yeah, say goodbye to your crowdfunding, say goodbye to your airline. So last night in researching for the, the show today, I'm just trying to find more information and um, there's a story here. Uh, crowdfunding platform Uprise Africa 
and this was it was a while back. They were there was a big article there about a 25 million rand fake pledge to start up a it was an SA startup integrate me. <laughs> Same crowd. Mm. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. No. Worries. Same crowd. <laughs> so and then I and then I thought let me take this one step further. I'm going to Google search the advantages and disadvantages of a crowdfunding platform. Yeah. And the one major disadvantage is that uh, there will be severe damage to the reputation of your business and the people who have pledged money if it doesn't work out. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's already not worked out. It but already not didn't work out back then. So yeah. why was it why why was it given to buy a government project now? So if if you and I went on to that and had a look at um, this whole crowdfunding, and we saw that nobody had invested a cent, would you invest? Not a chance. But if you suddenly saw twenty five million had already been invested. You say, sheesh, there's something behind this. People are backing this. So then yeah. you invest. So suddenly that $25 million does isn't needed anymore because you've already raised $25 million somewhere else through the rest of the people. So it's, it's a little bit of a thing. It's a, very, a typical very mock advert. Um, so this, this whole thing is just a, a smokescreen. Well, I don't know. but Well, it has to be. You if you're going to invest in a company, I'm not like a big hotshot investor, I can tell you that. But if I want to invest in a company, I'm probably I'm going to go directly to that company and invest. Okay, mm. obviously, mm. They, if they're listed. Mm. Yeah. But, I mean, look, make no mistake, crowdfunding works. There's no, uh, it's it works. You've seen it around the world. Guys have in, invented things, and crowdfunding absolutely works for proper projects. Proper projects, mm -hmm. not yeah. a failed state-owned yeah. airline. Anyway. Can we, we bury that one, Ryan? I know you were really keen today <laughs> to talk so about SA Express. So Ryan, he's uh, <laughs> those of you that know Ryan, he uh, <laughs> he's got this uh, inability to hide his uh, the way he feels. Mm. So yesterday, <laughs> I say, uh, Ryan, you know, I wanna I wanna talk about this SA Express story, and he says, Oh, but. We have spoken about this nonsense for the last <laughs> however long. I'm over it. I'm done. It's finished. <laughs> Let's move on. I, I, I don't want to hear about it. Those Muppets must uh, <laughs> bugger off. Sometimes he gets so angry about it, his color changes. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel my color changing right yeah. now. He's, he's, <laughs> the blood is rushing to his head. No, look, I mean, you know, obviously being an ex-employee there, my blood does boil every time that bloody name comes up, SA Express. I mean, they've really just ruined so many lives. Um, the government I'm talking about, not mm. not the people that used to work there. I do miss but a lot of the people that used to work there. But it's hard to almost separate things at times. That's the thing. And I mean, I've I've just decided to completely separate myself from that and move on otherwise you're going to get stuck in this this little you know time capsule and you're never going to be able to move on so yeah that was my reason i just i'm so tired of flogging that dead horse but we, but we love that about <laughs> you man. we love that about you yeah. let's talk about you know we, we got to you know this this show when we started it was all about positive motivation so off to sa now <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole Is my face going ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh public enterprises boss been in a bit of hot water with SARPA because of the uh attack on the the SA pilots, accusing them of greed and maintaining a self enriching apartheid era la labor agreement. So uh the DA have jumped on that and they trying to get out it looks like they try to get him to step down. We know that's not going to happen. <laughs> but I suppose it's just raising awareness to to what's going on there. And it's uh, it's a bit like a boxing match yeah. with two people that can't box. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's it's ridiculous. You know, no one can make a knockout blow and it's just going backwards and forwards. Yeah. And uh, the story from week to week, although there's news reports on it that, that we could actually talk about, yeah, it, it's very difficult to bring anything new to the table because it's the same. It's the same story. They mm. want to start SA version two. They locked out the pilots uh, a while ago. Now they need to unlock certain pilots to get the, the the new pilots trained. But they were locked out, and you can't just unlock 
the pilot. But then when they did, then Sapa stood up and said, no, 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 we're on strike. Now this inst- the strike is ongoing. Doesn't look like it looks like it's going to be, you know, to continue. You know what I find funny as well is amongst all of this now they've just announced yesterday that they've appointed a new CEO and uh, a set of board members to assist with the the ease in the transition from moving from the BRPs to starting up this airline again. And uh, I mean, those guys are just walking into a hornet's nest of of, of issues again. So. Yep. Mm. Funny. But it doesn't matter because, uh, you know, it won't work and mm. I'll get a severance and they can move on <laughs> just like it's <laughs> happened for the last <laughs> few oh. decades. Jeez. Shame. But, uh, can we, are we going to stop with the SAA stuff now? Do you want to carry on, Ryan? No. Let's... Uh, I, I, I love how Parrick is... Uh, <laughs> You know, one of the things I was going to talk about today is something that I've been going through, and I just see it with Ryan here, is non-attachment. And that is an interesting thing to, you know, you can be in a situation, I think a lot of people in this country are in the situation, in the world, in the situation where you are, you're so attached to an outcome. You're so attached to the past and the thing that you had, like the sex pilots, this SAA pilots, and the crews, and the technical staff, and everyone uh, attached to it. Um, and one of the one of the greatest things you can give yourself as a gift is to walk away. Yeah. To say, I am no longer attached to the outcome. I'm no longer attached to h- h- picking that job up again, hoping for something. Okay, yeah. the guys are hoping for payout. They're under pressure financially, emotionally, all of those things. But if you get to that stage in your life where you say, I am done with this, yeah. you stop thinking about it, you stop getting irritated about it, you can stop getting angry about it, and the second you're able to do that and you detach from that situation, your life becomes so much clearer. And you see the doors that are open to you. You know, there's a psychologist, Yasmin Mokahed. She said, said um, uh, in this life, no state is eternal. If it's painful, be patient because it's going to change. Mm. If it's ple- pleasurable don't get attached to it because it's also going to change. Yeah. Things are going to change all the time. So unless we realize that scenario, realize the situation is over, um, only then can we move forward. Mm-hmm. Who knows? When you do that, then maybe it comes back to you. Exactly. Maybe in SAA version two, maybe it actually works and maybe something happens. So we, you know, I, lo- I love the fact that Parrick is <laughs> detached from it. <laughs> Absolutely. I think if there's two guys in, in, in this world right now that totally understand that and, and are actually feeling the rewards of almost um, th- that liberation, it's so detoxifying just walking mm-hmm. away from that. Uh, not even just thinking about it. And when that mm-hmm. name comes up, it's just <laughs> I feel nothing well, for that whole set yeah, up anymore. And we see awesome. And, and we see it with Brian. Mm. Brian also has completely detached yeah. from anything and everything that a long time ago I said if fl- uh, SA Express starts again you're going to say you said no, straight away no, not wait. interested no, no, no. no thank you moved on no, quite no. happy with what I'm doing no which is great yeah I think yeah. that's what gives you the energy and the excitement to to move forward and uh, take on these new challenges I mean that one quote as well it's old one but you know, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Mm. And, uh, you know, like doing this and all the other stuff that we are, are trying, it's y- you need to be able to detach yourself and give yourself the latitude and the freedom to, to move. No, 100%. No, that was a, a big thing for me. Mm. When didn't when w- we were supposed to get paid, our last paycheck was in yeah. March, March 2020. Yeah. When on the, th- th- that next day, I detached because I, I knew it was done. And I think that was the best thing I ever did because it got me off my ass and uh, yeah. went and did a few other things. But yeah, done with that. And we'll keep reporting, obviously, of it as it goes on. And uh, as the stories come through of the uh, failure of the takeover, we'll, uh, we'll report on that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll keep reporting on SA. Uh, a lot of people are interested in the whole SA story. Mm. There's so many facets to it. And I think uh, one of the things I need to be aware of on the the podcast is that uh, although we have lots of aviators and you know people in South Africa watching us, and and I think uh, we're all privy to this information here, but there's a lot of people overseas that aren't that are interested in it, and a lot of people not in aviation that keep asking, hey, what what's happening with SAA? 
Hmm. Say, well, how long do you have? You know, because uh, this isn't a story that can that you can just kill in one episode. It's an ongoing thing. Done. S A done for today. Sex done for hmm. today. Happy run. Yeah, let's let's bury those ones. Let's talk about Wiz Air. Okay. The Hungarian. Yeah. What is the story yeah. there? <laughs> They're busy being sued at the moment for unfair dismissals of their pilots and cabin crew. So yeah, quite a story that. Um, their ex sort of chief operations officer Darwin Triggs is in hot water because obviously last year when the airline was looking to downsize and obviously you know like every airline around the world had to they had to obviously just make cuts and everything um obviously they don't make use of a seniority list or anything like that either but uh yeah shame this poor guy was uh his recording with his uh, management teammates um, was leaked out a couple of weeks ago, uh, which didn't really uh, let out <laughs> the good <laughs> manner in which they planned to let go of their crew. Oh, wow. Yeah, so quite funny. They, they're they being sued now for, for the unfair dismissal of, I think it's over 250 pilots and the manner in which this was done. Who's suing them? The pilots? Yeah, yeah the pilots. Um, so, I mean, obviously social media being what it is, didn't take long for the jokes to start flying around. Because in this um, this recording, he, he makes reference to his management guys saying, listen guys, we need to get rid of it, at least 250 pilots. I want you to let go of all the bad apples. If someone has looked funny, smelled funny, done anything wrong, just let them go. Mm. But tell them that it's because, you know, we're restructuring. Um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so it's not the kind of conversation that you want to 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 let you know get out there. But someone leaked it, so he's in hot water now. He's been let go, and uh, yeah, <laughs> the social the media memes. Let go. Are, yeah, it's quite funny because now they've got this like juice box um, picture with his face on doing the rounds. So oh, I saw um, that. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Yeah, bad apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> funny but yeah yeah fascinating story that well i'm glad it came out eventually mm. because it was obviously going on for a while everyone knew what was going on but yeah. i think there was no proof now there's now there's proof yeah. so yeah look so so pilots are getting a little bit more punchy out yeah. there <laughs> it's happening yeah well that they have to be um you, you, you can only sit down and take so much for so long yeah. so the guys are all going to start standing standing up and uh fighting back which is great tell me something do pilots regularly get breathalyzer test? Um, it does happen. Um, yeah, was I, I, I wouldn't say it's a. Uh, I've never been breathalyzed. No, it's never been. I've heard that there used to be obviously some bad apples that maybe were under the radar that used to get breathalyzed. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> the problem is, Brett. There are some guys that. Uh, if they haven't had a toot the night before, they're useless. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understood that every pilot was like yeah. that. that if, yeah. But it, it's India are now, uh, they, they're fighting to stop breathalyzer tests purely because of pandemic and that. But I was just sitting thinking yeah. about it. It's like, how, yeah, how no. often does that happen? And if they stop that, what, is the, what are the ramifications? If, if a pilot knows he's not going to be tested, yeah. then maybe uh, the eight hours going to reduce to six hours to four <laughs> hours to, to a little one in the cabin before uh, takeoff. What, was that um, breathalyzer test linked to like a, a PCR test or something? Like? Was no, it they're just, like they, no, they're just saying they don't want them to be b tested because it is it's dangerous oh. okay, <laughs> under the current environment i mean it's yeah. it's dangerous for the passengers at the back if it doesn't happen yeah. but uh it's just interesting that that's come up and i just thought oh it's interesting are pilots actually tested in, on airlines yeah that sounds uh yeah there's a couple of spurries guys that were got in trouble in uh, yeah. the UK, wasn't it? Yeah. I wonder if anything ever came of that. I don't know. Probably eh? not. Eh? I don't know. I think they went to the pub to negotiate. Yeah. Uh, reminds me of that old joke. You know why why pilots drink? Because no. they're scared of flying. <laughs> <laughs> but you know why pilots fly? Because <laughs> no. they like drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, CIA. Can we talk about them for a second? Uh, the guys busy here doing our. Reval on the mm. Dash 8, Dash eight. Mm. Rowan and Shaul, yeah. good bunch of guys. And uh, the CIA got a, have you seen the notice for the new licenses? It's yes. about time. Yeah, uh, yeah, quite nice. There's a, la announcing the launch of a new card license, which replaced the old booklets that we've been using. And uh, all your information is going to be on there. So sort of a digital copy, mm. really nice. And it brings us into the 21st century. 
So how does that work? Because the old book licenses, there's medicals, there's what you rate it on, all of that. So stuff. it's all so going to be in there. In yeah. like a digital. What, like a, in a so digital. you can scan it like a QR code. Mm. Yeah. Oh, Finally, but because I mean, brilliant. These paper book licenses have been such a mess because that you know you put those pages in and the ink is still a little bit wet and yeah. it's, yeah. oh, it's just been a nightmare yeah. so i'm glad they're finally catching up at the times but i can see there's, there might be some pushback because how are you going to tell if someone's got a ppl now or someone's got an atp oh yeah it's not going to be different color so there's cards. some pilots you just know they're going to spray paint there's green to show. <laughs> <laughs> you you walk in the cia the green the green covers are flashed all over the place. So the guys yeah. love that. They if, absolutely if love it. Now they're gonna yeah, they're gonna flash a little card and say, Please scan me so I can show you that I've got an ATP I license. I can just <laughs> picture this, you know, like a young hotshot guy who's just got his license. Hey, gonna he's gonna be the mirror now. No, but listen to this. I, c I can just see it, man. Um he's gonna take a girl out on a date, you know, and uh, it's gonna be time to pay for the thing and the bill will come and he'll whip out his card like oh, sorry. My pilot's license, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Watch that move happen. Uh. <laughs> I think you've given a whole lot of guys Ryan's a really pick-up ideas. <laughs> no, it's because if I was 20 years younger, I'd probably move I would pull. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah. Anyway, that's cool that that's coming out. I think yeah. that's quite nice. Yeah. Uh, I saw a notice there, well, an article, Lyft has launched a dog-friendly flight offering so you can take your small dog on a Lyft aircraft. But I stand corrected. Semi have been doing this for a while, haven't e they? I think so. Yes, they have. Yeah. I, I do stand corrected, but I believe Semi started that a mm. while back. You can take your small dog on a Semi flight. That's cool. Yeah, I hmm. saw that a lot in Europe when we were traveling, um, you know, to and from Sim back in the day. Uh, you, I was amazed when you'd be in Paris airport and everybody's walking around with their small dogs. Mm. Um, it's obviously quite a thing. That I think a lot of people will travel more if they know that they can do that yeah they will mm. it's a nice idea yeah, yeah. Uh, staying with Lyft uh, John Hull our friend from the UK he uh, just interviewed John Ayachi and uh, Salias Jordan mm -hmm. the CEO and the head of commercial it was a nice interview and that's why I brought Lyft up at the beginning today because they're they've started up and uh, to be honest, I don't I don't really have too much inside gen as to how they're doing, but the the concept is seems to be working, and uh, it's a very nimble concept. They they were speaking about the possibility of going regional. They can do that. They can also continue with what they're doing. They've got the right aircraft. The three twenty's got a decent range, so it can go you know pretty much wherever in that uh, where they would like, and. Um, they're adaptable. That's the, the key word. They can adapt to whatever the market uh, presents, which I think right now is a, is a good place to be in. They, they're ready to remodel if need be. But uh, go listen to that uh, interview. It was really good. I'll leave it uh, in the show notes as well. Cool. Have you guys ordered your uh, Vivo smartphone yet? Tell me about it. Not no. Vivo. Yeah, okay. your, your Vivo smartphone. No. It's a new Chinese smartphone. But if you ordered it, you might wait a while. Because there's a ban on those. Oh, things. was that the... <laughs> 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 what, yeah. what is this? What is the Vivo? So last week, there was a cargo pallet at uh, Czech Lap Kok Airport in Hong Kong. Say that again? Yeah. I was reading <laughs> that and I was like, who names these airports? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it's Hong Kong. That'll be a good name for the new SA Express. <laughs> 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 what a lot of cuck anyway. Uh, it's <laughs> better than Noah's Ark. I mean, oh, sorry, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> at Czech Lab Cock, Hong Kong International Airport, there was a pallet that uh, was full of these Vivo smartphones, lithium ion batteries, <laughs> went up in flames. And on yeah, the ground? On the ground. In it the plane? No, these things are packed out on the apron, getting yeah, ready yeah. to get loaded. It. It turns into a fireball. Like oh, no, I've got to go and watch that. Epic fire. And I mean, they were just so lucky that How this thing... How do you spell Chip Black Cock? <laughs> Chip Lap Cock. Cock. Yeah, um, yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'll... It's in the show notes. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I know. Just as well that this thing uh, went up in flames while it was on the ground before it got loaded in the aircraft because it would have caused a spectacular plane crash. That's for sure. Jeez. But, um, yeah, I think lithium-ion batteries are going to be... Done for a while. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's hmm. talk about tourism. Yeah. So, if you've got a green mamba passport like <laughs> I do... <laughs> Same problem. 
Yeah, there's 103 countries you can visit visa-free. Uh, compare that to a Japanese passport holder who can visit 193 destinations. Speaking of Japan, have you seen Sea uh, Spiracy on Netflix? Oh, man. Mm -mm. Wow. What's that about? Jeez. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. See, uh, it's one of those, those programs that you watch and everyone should actually uh, watch it, but you really don't want to watch it. I remember no. Val was talking about it the other day. It's got to do with uh, all the plastic and that in the yeah, ocean. And yeah, a lot but more. That's, that's, that's okay. minor. Compared so to the, minor. The, the, the fisheries industry, has, they've, they've attacked back and said that there was a lot of misrepresentation going on there as well. Okay. But I don't care about the misrepresentation. There's a bay there in Japan where they... Put the dolphins, they 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 in right into the corner of this bay and slaughter these dolphins. So misrepresentation, what? Yeah, <laughs> what yeah. Load. it's terrible. But anyway, it, it, it's it's worth a watch. Uh, if you're a, a citizen of Afghanistan, you can only visit 26 destinations. So it doesn't make our green mamba seem too bad. Hmm. I don't know, but the Green Mumba's 103 destinations. What are those destinations? I okay. really sometimes don't want to visit the DRC. No, but... Or, uh, or, or, right, Brett. Well, if you don't want to quarantine, um, there, there are some options for us if we're thinking about a little summer trip for the Brian Air podcast yeah, yeah. team. As we are. Uh, Afghanistan, Central African Republic, Albania, Costa Rica, North Macedonia. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that one. Tonga. <laughs> So, Ryan, what about a little jaw across to Albania for the weekend? Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's been on the top of my bucket list <laughs> for how long? I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look. look give, give that one a skip. I'll tell you where I would like to go is the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. But um, but difficult if you're going there now. There's a volcano that's just erupted uh. the last four days, volcanic ash. So, yeah, you've got travel plans well, to the Caribbean. Uh, you've seen the one in Iceland as Hang well. Hang five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it seems like uh, there's a lot of eruptions happening. Yeah, jokes aside, though, obviously yeah. these uh, restrictions are quite—they're uh, not good for South Africans. Mm -hmm. We mentioned it again last week. This uh, the variant that got called the South African variant—it's done us a huge amount of damage. Mm. Obviously, the U.S., the U.K., we flagged there, and then Belgium, France, Germany, and Switzerland. I just find it so interesting that. This we the ones that are flagged. No, oh, it's crazy. And the rest of the world is locked down, and uh, yeah, it's a little bit different here yeah, from our perspective. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it drives me it's a one bit of those mad. Stories. Domestic travel in Air France has been banned by French MPs. Flights are being switched to trains. Not all of them, but some of them. You know why? Because you can't you can't catch that. Uh, Disease no, because on a train. it's low to the ground. That's uh, it. When you're high up, then you can Tokolosh catch it. style. <laughs> 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 but now tell me, a train doesn't have a HIPAA filter. Uh, so, no. Where is it safer? You need that HIPAA filter to, to make it safe. You've got one of those Maybe in your toilet, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need it. Maybe they can do a HIPAA open window on the train. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, I, I can't understand it. I just some of these things that come out. I just I uh, come on. All of the things that come out is an absolute joke. I want to, guys. You know, <laughs> one of the things that I, I want to make clear with you guys, in particular, is, you know, let's uh, let's stay clear of any controversy and when we talk about stories let's just i don't want to have to toe that line of uh you know we've got to be careful what we say let's just stick to stories that don't invite controversy onto the show and um you know like united for example um yeah. you know united are going to train five thousand new pilots and at least half of them must be women or people of color can we talk about that please ryan yeah. <laughs> uh, it all just sounds like more of the same. I mean, United, you are going to follow a path similar to what our South African Airways did. The guys, look, don't get me wrong. I'm not toe the line. Toe the line. I'm, I'm not any kind of. Now this is interesting, everyone. <laughs> you got to watch Ryan try to stay inside these barriers. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not so easy because it's so no. ludicrous. It's so yeah. ludicrous. A job based on a skill set. 
Yeah. What do we talk about all the time in training? Knowledge, skills, and attitudes. Exactly. So where does a gender or race come into that that whole thing? Anyway, that's what I. That's the type of story. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, Man, what is going on on this planet? Look, really, the that truth is, is woke, is, man. And I mean, a lot of podcasts that you listen to uh, of, of saying that now, the, the world has just become so full of pansies. Everybody is so damn sensitive, and you know, people have just got to get over it. Calm down, chillax, and just be real about about things and accept what people mm. have to say. And Pan- pansies are great when you're a flower. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, uh, you know, look, not um, so much anywhere else. I think the freedom of speech thing has, has, has been reined in too much. You, you need time. to be able to speak your mind and, and, and But not on the podcast, please. Yeah. Look. Keep it tidy. Keep we it tidy. speak our mind as long as Brian <laughs> doesn't bleep us out. <laughs> yeah, I think there's <laughs> gonna be some severe editing on, on this one. I no, don't I don't think so. I, <laughs> I don't, don't think, think so. so. I think it's, it's we we d- uh, all we're doing is saying what everyone is thinking. And true that's story. The thing. Yeah. No, look, we're not and we're not saying anything that that's not here in the news. That is what they said. That is what they want to do. You can make your own mind up as to what you think about that. For me, I don't want to board an airplane that is that the the crew were chosen to fly that airplane based on something other than knowledge, skills, and attitude. If I can say that exactly. again, yeah, exactly. So yep. I, that that's what I stick with, and I maintain that. I wouldn't let my family board an aircraft without that being the case. And this is an Airbus because the Airbus will protect you. Oh yeah, it's got an alpha floor, and it doesn't lie. So yep, um, toe the line. <laughs> all the all and 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 they can even get through uh, lawsuits of bribery and corruption, like what's happening with Sri Lankan uh, airlines. Tell me about that. A billion dollar lawsuit against Airbus, that uh, Airbus obviously was supplying uh, what was it uh, six A three thirties, eight A three fifties, and uh, obviously there was a lawsuit in the UK that they found massive bribery and corruption from Airbus's side to mm. get the deal. Really. So yeah. Not so, not so good for the airline manufacturers. I mean, you got a good product. Why the hell do you have to bribe someone to take it? Yeah. I mean, it's not like and Boeing is a big competition at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, staying oh, with yeah. Boeing. I mean, yeah. this the whole triple seven with the Pratt and Whitney four thousand engines. Uh, Japan Airlines has pulled the plug on thirteen of their triple mm. sevens with those engines, uh, with immediate effect. Orders, surprisingly, on Boeing's side, though, obviously fueled by that major uh, Southwest Airlines order. Mm. Um, but uh, f- that was obviously for the max. So 193, hun- correction, 196 orders in March, and uh, including the previously announced 100 from Southwest. So, and then it's got, while losing 156 to cancellations, Turkish Airlines scrapped most of its commitment for the 50 MAX jets. So still airlines are cancelling, but uh, I think for the first time in a while, a real positive order book for Boeing. And like we say, with the whole corruption, Brett, there's, you know, Airbus, Boeing, and, and Embraer there, you know, biting at the heels. Mm. There was an mm. article doing the rounds, which I'm sure would have made a few Max operators not slam shut last week as well, um, where they picked up an electrical issue with a 737 Max that threatened to have to obviously ground, not all of it, but some of the, f- the, the fleet that are out there. So I didn't read too much into it. I was busy and I saw the highlight. I just thought, oh, geez, here goes another. There we go again. Yeah, you know, and <laughs> you've just committed to 100 orders of the 73 Max and uh, Boeing says, oh, sorry, I mean... It's enough to they make need you pucker to, they a bit. Need, they need to rethink the, the last uh, manufacturer of the last 12 747s that are on the line now. Yep. 12 left. I would, I would open that uh, line up again mm. and start <laughs> pushing the 74s again. Yeah. See, American, American Airlines, they've removed their espresso, espresso machines to save weight. That's a crap move. Yeah, they should just remove Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Genuine. Uh, there yeah. goes our US market. <laughs> yeah. No, no. yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Better edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Aviadev Africa is now open for registration, guys. It's free to register. And mm-hmm. uh, John Hull and his team there, it's going to be hosted online. And uh, according to what they say, it's going to be um, it's going to be more like a, a TV show than a webinar. 
if John's involved, it's going to be good. Yeah. And uh, I'm quite interested to see how it actually I plays I'm out. I'm very keen to see how that plays out. I mean, uh, webinars are the most frustrating things ever, especially you've got your panel of delegates and oh man it is so boring even if you're sitting there now imagine you're sitting at home and you've got to sit and watch this mm. so i'm really keen to see what john is going to do you turn it into a tv program bring some life into it bring color into it bring adverts into it i don't know just just turn it into a proper production well that's what they're doing they they're gonna you well, know you think you know this whole the whole webinar story it, it's evolved mm. and you can't actually i mean even for us here at samara we can't you can't go and host a, a rinky dink webinar these days because it reflects on your company it's got to mm. be professional and uh, there are things that can be done john's uh, spoken to me about what their plan is and how they they intend to do it and let me tell you it's going to be cool yeah i'm gonna I'll sign up for that it's going to be yeah, really cool definitely and uh, obviously that's that is we, you talk about we've spoken for the last 49 episodes about networking and the importance of networking and building a, a, a strong network around you. Well, you know, if you've been left behind and you're behind the curve on that, if you want to take a few major leaps forward, highly recommend checking out this. Uh, mm. It should be a big one. I mean, especially with there not being uh, any um, trade shows or expeditions that have been allowed for the last year and a half. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be quite a big... Um, Mm. Uh, big event a big event yeah. it's going to be huge people are going to be able yeah. to reconnect and should be awesome are you going to be able to put uh, on the show notes I will do that no yeah. it's definitely going to be in the show notes and um, yeah I spoke last week and I and I created a couple of short videos about it we spoke about uh, Tim Clark's hub and spoke uh, mm. interview that he did with Simple Flying and I've watched that again and I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to make my own mind up about the about what's going to happen in the future. You know, it's nice to try and you know second guess and see you know where's this industry going. And a lot of our you know I'm a I'm a big fan of these uh, narrow body long haul aircraft because I think it opens up such a it, it opens up a, a market that wasn't there five years ago. But I'd like to know what what everyone else thinks about that and because when i posted these things I, I i posted it with a another video clip that i took out about the what do you think about the looming pilot shortage mm. and the reason i put that out was obviously because of what happened in the states a few weeks ago where they canceled flights because they didn't have pilots so whether you think there's a shortage of or not there was one that weekend and they are adjusting their model to try and get pilots in Mm. but there is such a a pushback from certain pilots to say how can you even say there's a shortage i'm sitting at home waiting here and you're talking about a shortage no no, no. i'm saying is what is happening mm. there was a shortage there's talk of a shortage there absolutely in the future will be a shortage there's going to be an area there's going to be a big hole that's going to have to be filled and let's not forget of all those uh pilots that were nearing retirement that have taken retirement a few a couple of years earlier mm. that that will have an effect how big that effect is we don't know it depends how the industry recovers but man i, I really uh, i was trying to understand where does the pushback come from why are you so aggressive about the the mention of a pilot shortage and uh you know i understand the guys and the girls and that 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 have lost their jobs sitting at home they don't want to hear that uh, someone talking about uh, a shortage. But nevertheless, um, I find it important to, to, to not, not lose hope and not lose motivation. I, I understand if you're waiting for a job, how frustrating it can be. But you can keep your license current. If you can, keep it current. Keep your medical going. Stay in the, the no. Read the, the no tams if you have to. Look, you know, start looking at your TAFs and METARs again because it is going to turn around. And when it does, you need to be ready to go to an interview tomorrow. Mm. Don't get yourself in such a knot where you, we spoke at the beginning, Brett, about disconnect. And mm. as good as that was for myself and Ryan, it was very company specific. You know, I disconnected myself from SA Express because I had to. 
I had to. I had to get that out of my head and say, right, well, th- nothing is going to happen now for a while. I'm going to have to step out of my comfort zone and go and do something. And it was hard. It was a challenge. But, man, I'm so happy I did it. But now, where this is where the point I want to make. Don't disconnect yourself from the industry that you loved so much. You know, you got no one gets into flying by chance. You get into flying because you're a passionate aviator. And uh, I think there's a lot of people out there right now that have been so burnt by their companies and by aviation that they just don't want to hear about it. And they, they've distanced themselves from it. And I think that can be dangerous. And Brett, maybe you want to just jump in there as well. And, you know, because I'd be interested to hear what you have to say about it. Because disconnecting, can you disconnect from the wrong thing? you've got to be quite careful. You can disconnect from something that is harming you, that doesn't build you, that doesn't that doesn't push you. But uh, you don't want to disconnect from everything. Yeah, so for me, it's not disconnecting from everything. If, if I think of disconnecting, it's disconnecting from an environment or a situation that is not working. Mm. 12 months down the line and you still are connected and holding on to that job in the aviation industry is suicide. So is that so can we say holding on to the previous job that you had in the aviation industry is suicide but don't lose hope of having a your skill set and everything that you've learned over the years is still there. So is there an opportunity to look at something to start, you know, you know, really pushing forward for something else in that same sector, or do you just walk away? Sometimes you have to walk away. That's just life. That's reality. But if you, if you, you, you desperate to be a pilot, that's fine. If you've got the finances to hold on and wait for something and put your CV out there, that's fine. But if you're in a situation where you cannot do that, you cannot sit around and say, she's like, I'm, 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 I'm waiting for this to happen. You've got to move. You've got to do something else. Keep, if, uh, we all love aviation. That's why we are here. Um, and if you can keep in touch, you can, you can read your NOTAMs, you can study any online courses you can do, carry on doing that. But make sure you have other options in place. Mm. If it, the door opens sometime down the line, great. Absolutely. Step back into it. And I agree with you there, Brian, mm. where now suddenly you kept up to date. So, yeah, you, you're, you ready can, to you're ready to go. You're ready to jump into a situation. The, the, this, you know, non-attachment is not saying I have no feeling for things. I don't care about things. No, it's not. It's got nothing to do with that. Non-attachment is saying it doesn't matter what the outcome is. Whether the outcome is I am a pilot or I'm not a pilot, I've got to be free in my thinking, in my mind, to say I'm open to anything. Mm. That, for me, is the biggest thing here. So where you've got got pilots sitting at home, she's like my heart goes out to them. But don't sit at home waiting for something to happen. Get out there, go and do something and say, it doesn't matter. I really want to be a pilot. Mm. But um, you know so what? It's what not going to happen. Maybe right now. What I'm taking from that is you've got to be open to you've got to be open to change first mm. of all. But mm. to be open to change, you also can't you can't just uh, neglect the possibility of something that y- your your first choice is to go and fly. Yeah. Don't write that off as an opportunity, but be open to change because something else, something better might come along. You, you never know. Ryan, I mean, you can jump in here. Yeah. You, you, you've handled this whole situation well. However, we're also very lucky because we're very much in this aviation environment here. So it's easy for us to say, yeah, you know, m- move on from aviation, but there's, there's seven simulators outside here. Mm. So you've you got to be got to be realistic yeah no look to weigh in on this I, I, I totally agree i think there are things that happen in life there are events and ordeals that you would have to go through that are certainly going to change your world significantly um i think i draw my inspiration my energy from not necessarily uh, just about what we're talking about in the aviation context of this whole thing but i mean you've heard about um, i spoke about my brother and i'm just going to use that as an example yeah, now as please. well i mean yeah. My brother and I, for the most part of his life, we never really saw eye to eye. I've always thought he was a, a little shit, so to speak, because he was of the opinion that the world owed him a favor. And he's battled along with a lot of things and decisions that he's made in life that never worked out in his favor. Unfortunately, with what happened to him over the last couple of years, 
the last few months led to him, you know, losing the lower half of his right hand leg. And he went through one massive life changing event in the last couple of months. And I still looked at this whole thing and I was like worried because it could go one of two ways. It was the same way we had to deal with the loss of our, our flying jobs last year. It could have gone one or two ways as to how you handle the situation, deal with it and pick yourself up and move forward. And and I've watched him and the change that's come about him and the way he's bounced back. And it's just proof, man. That is sheer and your positive head. mindset, will... Uh, determination it all comes from within only mm. you can mm. make that kind of thing happen mm. so you know it, it's, it's not entirely the same as, as a pilot now but but it but is it is, sense, it is in a way you know? i mean you, you got to <laughs> you got to take what life has dealt with you that and and, and, yeah. and you know, either make lemon juice or lemonade whatever yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, Move that 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 <laughs> is the the greatest example of non-attachment exactly seriously yeah, yeah that's um, it doesn't and, yeah. Uh, you know it doesn't it doesn't get more real than that exactly i'll never forget when i was i was 20 years old about to start my com the first gulf war happened the oil prices went through the roof pilots were retrenched worldwide because the airlines were cutting back massively and i was sitting out I, uh, uh, Ross Air, I think it was, an mm. executive yeah. jet at Lanceria, sitting next to a pilot, and I said to him, geez, like, I can't wait for this job. I've got 50 hours. I will wash planes to get into this. Uh, the, I, me, airline pilot, was my dream since I was a kid. And I was sitting there, and, and he said, I said, how many hours do you have? And he said, oh, about 5,500 on jets, and I'm also prepared to wash planes. And it was at that moment, and mm. I thought, <laughs> I have 50 hours as a PPL. Mm. I think I need to let go of this. Because <laughs> and thank goodness I did, because I would have s- walked around for the next five years, try to get a job, mm. and I would have been five years behind but where Brett, I am I, I love that story, because uh, that, uh, to me, it's maybe it epitomizes what we've tried to speak about today. There you were, wanting to be an airline pilot, but here you are, sitting on a podcast in a simulator center, you know, the podcast focuses on the airline and travel industry mm. in Southern Africa and the world. So in one way, your not saying the end goal, but your end goal is to be on a on an aviation podcast, but those those paths are aligned. The and paths are aligned, Brian, and at the at the end of the day, throughout of my life since then, I have I've I've flown, mm. I've had my PPL, I've I've done all my, my stuff. I've been involved in aviation. I've never lost touch with it. So I don't feel I've lost a thing. Mm. I've gained because, I mean, I've got a business mindset. I've had 30 years of experience um, in that. And uh, have I lost? No. Yeah, I wasn't a captain sitting in uh, the f- on the flight deck. But it doesn't matter. Sure. Yeah. No, it's, uh, and I think uh, maybe if we could leave it today with, and I know you guys will agree, I've uh, I went on as I as I said before on a a bit of a I shot out a whole lot of emails and a whole lot of messages to people to say this is what I'm doing I'd like your support and I've got a huge response mm-hmm. those that I didn't get a response from you know there I know where I stand but uh, it, it was it was great to get that response but I also want to open it up you know for us if you want to chat and you want to know about the industry, I'm getting a lot of calls from people about, you know, what they need to do for their licenses. A lot of guys are stuck around the world. They can't get home. What do they do for their, you know, keep the ATP current? Uh, can they do it here at some Aero? And uh, the, the, the guys need advice. So I would like to talk a bit more about that in the coming weeks. Mm. Craig, maybe you can get hold of me and uh, Craig might be a good guy to have on again to talk about the, the legislation slide. Because yep. uh, it's important. The guys are worried about it. They're holding yeah. on to these licenses that they've worked hard for, and they don't actually know how to how to keep them going. Yeah. So uh, it's a big thing. Please That'd contact be a us. Good idea. Yeah, contact us if you need anything. Obviously, you've heard Brett's angle. You know, Brett's uh, you know big on the mentoring side, and I know he'd be happy to chat to anyone about uh, you know disconnecting yourself and uh, building yourself up for something else. Ryan and, uh, of course, myself, happy to talk about, uh, you know, motivation and flying stuff as well. As always, please give us a subscribe, a like, and shoot us a review. It really does go a long way to supporting the show. 
And uh, next week's episode 50, guys. So it's a bit of a milestone for us and something I'm incredibly proud of. It's going to have to be a good episode. Yeah. And uh, I'd also like to know everyone's opinion on... Uh, we, we prepare quite hard for this show. And uh, a lot of time, a lot of effort goes into not only looking at a particular story, because it's one thing just to sit here and read a whole bunch of stories. And, and like we said, you know, you've got the Sax SA saga. Those stories don't really ever change. So you can put your spin on it and uh, your opinion on it, but there's only so many opinions you can give on a, on a dead horse story, <laughs> so to speak. But uh, when we prepare, we, uh, we, we often get together on uh, Zoom and uh, we discuss what we're going to talk about. And I'd like to know if there's anyone out there that would like to tune into those discussions and can maybe, you know, shoot us a few comments to say, hey, guys, I'd like to hear more about this this week or you spoke too much about that last week. Now, the only way we can do that is to do that live. And I'm quite interested in doing that live. Um, we're not going to be in the studio. We're probably going to be at our homes or mm. wherever it might be. But uh, it'll, we, we do that normally on a Tuesday. And 7, uh, 7 p.m. It would be great to do that live. 7 p.m. on it. a Tuesday. And it might be worth it to shoot that out live. If you want to tune in and have a listen and uh, give, us, uh, give us some feedback on this week's show. And maybe we spoke. We've been blabbering on you for an hour, yeah. close to an hour now. But uh, if there's anything you would really like to hear, it might give us a good idea as to what to talk about on this show. So this show is going to stay as it is. This is our Friday show. This is a, a show I'm passionate about. It's going to stay this way. But uh, we want to add more stuff onto mm. the channel. Man, we, we, we want to add more stuff. And the only way to do it is to, to shoot it out live. I'm quite keen to do it, but I'd like to know what the response is going to be. If everyone thinks, no, listen, stick to what you're doing, fine. We'll stick to what you're doing. But if you'd like to join in live, and uh, maybe we can have the odd uh, other guest on as well, you know, mm. might be cool. Let us know. Leave a leave a comment. Leave a comment there on YouTube and uh, Tuesday seven p.m. Yeah, let's just tell them a bit about. It. I mean, look, it's not all just business, guys. Um, let's it's be honest. Far I from mean, what I enjoy about it, obviously, it's a discussion about the podcast. It's planning. It's prep. But my favorite part is getting to sit there every Tuesday night religiously with my glass of whiskey, bottle of whiskey. Of, mm, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> in in a, in a glass. Yeah. In a glass. Yeah. But I mean, you know, why not just join us for that? And it's a, it's a bit of a session. It's quite cool. So if you want to join us on uh, <laughs> Tuesday evening at 7. For a whiskey. For a glass of whiskey with Ryan. <laughs> and uh, we can discuss. We'll give, we'll give his address out. We'll be putting it on the show notes. <laughs> yeah. I think it might yeah. make for a nice discussion because it's not yeah. always straightforward. What angle do you want to uh, take the show down? So if you want to be involved in, uh, in that angle, then please join us. Uh, we'll give it a try. I can't guarantee that it's actually going to work because <laughs> I've got to figure this, this out in a few <laughs> days. But we had a bit of a trial run the other day and uh, I think it's quite cool and it might add another element. So, uh, yeah, check us out on uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Let's take the lead. We're Done. doing it. <laughs> Done. Now, we now jumped. The, the, the best way to commit to anything is to announce it on a podcast. Then there you are go. stuck. Yeah. Now you're going to do it. <laughs> Until next week, everyone, have a lovely weekend. Thanks for your support as always. Yeah, see you on Tuesday, hopefully. Goodbye for now. Cheers, guys. Cheers, boys and girls.